I'm going to talk to you about probably the main things that I wish that I had have been told earlier on in my tech career, specifically around the topic of cybersecurity. And a lot of people find out and learn about these things way down the line. And by then it's like, well, I've wasted all this time. And look, I've worked in tech for, I don't know, over 20 years, love it, have worked in lots of different opportunities in different techie roles. Over the years, you obviously develop lots and lots of skills, right? You start off generally in some sort of a help desk role and then you build up your skills from there until you get to a level where you feel like, yeah, I'm pretty good now. I'm pretty competent. I sort of know my stuff. Loving tech, love this YouTube channel. And if you like it as well, would love it if you support us uh, by subscribing. We release videos that we talk about all tech topics. So if you click on the subscription button on the bell, you can keep up to date with what we're releasing. This is a tool that you need to get for your IT management and your IT monitoring. You can now oversee your servers, your workstation, and your virtual machines effortlessly. You can even perform critical tasks like restarting your servers, executing scripts, troubleshooting issues, all from the convenience of your smartphone. You don't just need your computer, you can do it from the palm of your hand. You can address those potential problems and minimize any downtime before they become a big issue. So now you can break free from the limitations of time and location. With Pulseway, you can enjoy a well-deserved vacation while maintaining complete control of all of your IT tech and infrastructure. There are stacks of IT professionals out there that are now actively using Pulseway. You need to be one of them. You can get an exclusive saving if you sign up to Pulseway. Down below, check the link and become better at managing your tech. Here's the first one. First, first, first. Get a lab. Build a lab. Um, one of the most important things that I could suggest to any single person is to have your own space in your home environment if you have that ability or in a workplace if you've got really really nice if you've got a really really nice boss maybe ask your boss and say hey i want to learn more about tech can i uh, set up a little space where i can just do my own learning maybe they'll say yes if they're a good boss they'll say yes if they say no maybe they're not a good boss i would encourage you to ask them and what you can do if you don't have that ability do it at home but have a space where you can actually do your own learning right at home Set up some virtual servers. If you've got an old computer, remove Windows, install Linux onto it, install some virtual software onto it and build something like Kali Linux. And then you can start playing around with all of the cybersecurity tech tools. Start learning around penetration testing, learn how to crack passwords, learn how to do malware, phishing, things like this, all for ethical good reasons. You're not gonna become a hacker. Don't become a hacker, a bad one, become a good, ethical hacker so that you can then be a little bit more cluey when it comes to cybersecurity. And this is the sort of stuff that I recommend that I uh, I wish I had have done this earlier on because I'm telling you, it took me probably like five years, six years into my tech career to then realize that I just was not progressing in my tech career. I was not being given additional opportunities because I wasn't able to get the, uh, the experience in a workplace. So then I did it myself. I said to myself, self, I'm not learning about this thing. So I'm gonna go and research it myself. So in a way it sucked because I had to go and do it in my own time, right? I had to finish work and then go and do it in my own time. But it was super valuable in my learning experience to go and play around with the stuff myself, to go and build the service, to go and break the service, to do my own troubleshooting and to learn about cybersecurity myself because then I was able to be confident to say to my boss, I want more responsibilities in this thing. I wanna be able to secure this thing. I wanna start patching this. I wanna start learning about intrusion detection. I wanna start managing these firewalls because I now had the experience, right? And if even in your workplace, if you're not getting that experience, look for another job because now you've got those experiences in house. My next one, I've got three, three points by the way, that was number one. Number two, get back to basics, get back to basics. Um, I've worked with lots of uh, cybersecurity people who think that they know a lot and they don't. They know some basic stuff around cybersecurity, but they're not really technical, which is like sort of frustrating because they're sort of meant to be technical. They're meant to be the technical experts across lots of different areas. If you're wanting to get into cybersecurity and you want to learn a lot more about cybersecurity, I recommend that you get to the basics of overarching tech, right? Knowing about the networking side, knowing around, knowing about the server side, knowing about Active Directory, knowing about how DNS works, learning about servers, learning about cloud tech, Azure, 
AWS, learning around, learning about the basics of all of this stuff from a networking perspective, routers, switches, firewalls. What do they all do? How do they all work with each other, all right? Pretty important. Storage solutions, SAN, NAS, learning around endpoint devices, right? Laptops and desktops, Windows, Linux, Mac. How do they all operate? Now, no, sounds like a lot of stuff. I get it. You don't have to become an expert at everything, but if you know some of the basic stuff, you're gonna become a better cybersecurity expert. Because I think, I think, you've got different types of cybersecurity people, right? You've got cybersecurity people that are really good at firewalls and all they do is firewalls. And maybe they were like a networking person and a networking person, they looked after the network and now they just wanna focus on network security. Great, good, 10 points for you. But I need to now secure my server. My web server is exposed to the internet how do I make sure that it's secure? What are the things that I can put in place? I don't know, I just do network security. Eh, it's not very good, it's not very good. You wanna become a cyber expert across as much as you can. So getting back to the basics, learn around networking, learn around TCP IP, learn around subnetting, IP addresses, but then on the server space, learning about Windows Server, learning about what servers you can build, what roles you can install in a Windows Server understanding the basics of Linux. Because if you're gonna work in a company that has a pool of Linux servers and Windows servers, it's good to know about Linux as well. A little bit about the command line is pretty important because you're gonna be in much more high demand if you know about security for both Windows and Linux. And then even the Mac. I mean, the Mac is used more and more, maybe not as much on the server infrastructure space, but definitely from an end user perspective. A lot more companies are using Macs as the main tool. Good if you know about how to secure the Mac, pretty important. And then together with that stuff is then learning a little bit more around command line stuff. Learning basics of bash scripting, vb.net, Python, learning about PowerShell, how to make basic batch files. You're gonna be much more in demand. So that's something that I highly recommend is getting back to the basics. And then our last one, here's the last one. And I think this one is, um, it's very contentious. It's very contentious because a lot of traditional folks, a lot of traditional folks um, really, really, really value the education component. And I get it, right? Education and studying for stuff is really, really important. I myself, like I'm, I'm certified, I've got a university degree and I went through all that stuff. And I think it was really good. And it really did help me to get my job and to stand out amongst the rest. I get all that. I'm not saying that it's a no good thing. But then there's lots of people who go and study and get all the certifications that they need. And then they expect to go get a job, but they got no experience. So this is the age old question of real world experience versus certs versus degrees which one is better? And I'm not gonna say one is better over the other because I think they're both very, very important. But I'm gonna say that often the real world experience is so much, so much more important. And I wish this is something that somebody told me early on because earlier on in my career, I finished uni and then I um, got, what, what did I get? Well, like, I think, I think one of my first years was the CCNA and I thought I knew it all. I thought I knew it all, knew it all. And then I started working with people that had been in the industry for like 10, 15 years, right? In tech, in different cyber roles, in, in systems, in networking roles. And I just realized how little I actually knew. I did not know very much because they all had the real world experience. I've had the opportunity to interview lots of people and you've got no idea, no idea the amount of people that I have interviewed that their CV looks amazing. Right, they've got every single cert under the book. They've got certifications in all the Cisco stuff in Palo Alto. They're cyber experts. They've got the ethical hacking. They've got all these certs, but then they don't have the experience. Or they've got maybe one or two years of tech experience in a company. And then when you bring them in for the interview, because their resume looks incredible, they've got all the certs, right? They've got it all there. They're certified. You start asking them some questions. Tell me about a scenario when this happened and how did you respond? How did you communicate with this person? How, what about dealing with a vendor? You've had a real world phishing attack in an organization. What did you do? And, they, and they're like, uh, I don't know, because they've never really experienced it at all. It's all head knowledge, okay? Now you're, I'm sure, you're asking yourself, but hey, Emilio, um, how do I get 
experience. How do I maybe get my first tech job? How do I get a role in cybersecurity unless I've got experience? Because a lot of people want the experience and I don't have experience. Well, this is goes back to the very first point around having your own lab, doing it, testing it yourself, simulating phishing attacks on your own network, simulating, you know, building a honeypot. Honeypot where it's like we get hackers attracted to this fake environment. Learn about firewalls, learn about subnetting, learn about how to set up you know, VPNs and things like this. Do it yourself, play around with it yourself. And if you have the ability to do it at work, do it at work first. But this is something that I wish I had have learned a lot more is valuing both. Again, I'm not competing one over the other. Have both the certs, have both the real world experience, but the real world experience is pretty important. So if you're already in a tech role, become like a sponge. You know, like a sponge, it fills up with like water. And then you look at a sponge and it doesn't look like there's much there. But then you squeeze a thing and all this stuff comes out. Sometimes it's pretty gross. But you get the thing. You get the theory, right? Absorb as much knowledge as you can. Very, very important. Hopefully one of these helped you out. Let us know down, down below in the comments. Is there anything else that would help you out? Anything that I have missed? Anything that you've experienced that maybe um, could help out? Help out the community of our fellow tech geeks out there. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. Do the like, comment, subscribe thing. Hey, subscribe, click on the bell. Let's me know that you are supporting of the channel and uh, we'd love to see you next time. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk to you then.